Anytime you're doing a video that has overrated in the title, you gotta get ready for some hate. Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 most overrated movie directors, in my opinion. Yes, uh, saying someone is overrated is kind of a jackass statement because film directors, they, they try. They, they put their effort in. It's very easy for us to, you know, just say, you suck, you suck, you make bad movies and stuff. It's so easy for a critic to criticize a film. It's easier to criticize than to actually create a film and stuff. Like, I'm in the works of actually trying to create a film myself and writing and directing and stuff, so I know it's hard to make a movie and stuff, but I just can't help but what I feel. Like, this is just an opinion. Like, I'm not insulting these people as people. I'm not insulting them as who they are and shit like that. Like, it's got nothing to do with that. I just, personally, I don't love their work, and I don't understand why so many people love these filmmakers. That's... I mean, it's all opinion, like, you're allowed to have your opinion, just, in my opinion, I think these people are just a tad overrated. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna have any honorable mentions for overrated, because 10 is enough for me to, you know, not get as much hate. <laughs> so yeah, uh, coming in number 10 is, sadly, David Lynch. Um, the reason I have him at number 10 and not anywhere lower is because I actually don't hate David Lynch, actually. I like quite a few of his films. I think Mulholland Drive is a great movie. And I enjoy this race story a lot. I think that's a good movie, and I think Eraserhead's pretty good. And I think uh, Elephant Man's pretty good. But I just he, a lot of people think he's like a masterwork. And he's a genius filmmaker, and I find him just a little overrated. You know, I do like some of his films. I just I think he's a little overrated. I was never a Twin Peaks fan. I tried to get into the show, just couldn't get into it. I saw the movie, and it didn't make a lot of sense to me because I didn't watch the show. So that was my own stupidity. Uh, Lost Highway I never was a big fan of. There's a few other films he made I'm not, like, a huge fan of and stuff. Uh, he's got a very warped style, and just, like, he loves to be weird for the sake of being weird, and honestly, if that's your shtick, that's fine. Like, I love Tim Burton because he's a weird, gothy kind of guy, but that's mostly like old-school Tim Burton, not, like, now Tim Burton, but, uh, just, I don't know. Like, I, I like David Lynch, but I don't love him. He's just a little overrated. I don't hate him at all. I just, he's a little overrated. Code number nine is Darren Aronofsky. Yes. <laughs> Same goes for Darren Aronofsky. What I said about David Lynch, I don't hate Darren Aronofsky. There's actually quite a few films I really enjoy. I think The Wrestler is a phenomenal film. I think it's a fantastic film. And I love Black Swan as well. I think those are great, great movies. Uh, even Noah's not that bad. Uh, just uh, People put him on a pedestal as like this very genius filmmaker, and I just don't get it. I never liked Mother. I thought that was a dumb movie. Um, I didn't like, um, uh, Pi was okay. I think Requiem for a Dream is a very, just kind of gross movie. You just can't get into it. I thought The Fountain was a stupid, ridiculous film. Uh, I don't know, like, I, I, I just... I, I like Darren Aronofsky, and I, I like that he's different and unique and original, but I just think he's a little overrated. You know, he has made some great films. I just, I, I don't love him like everyone else does. Conan number eight is Zack Schneider. Zack Schneider, now we're into the ones I actually genuinely just don't like. Uh, Zack Schneider did Watchmen. Everyone knows I love Watchmen. I think Watchmen is a phenomenal film, and I think he knew that was a phenomenal film, and he just wanted to make every superhero movie like Watchmen. And not everyone can be like, fucking Watchmen, it's stupid. I also like Dawn of the Dead. His Dawn of the Dead was okay and stuff, but like everything else, just like Zack Schneider, I don't know. I, like, the ego on this guy is just irritating. I don't want to see a Schneider cut of Justice League, because yeah, I just don't want to see it. Uh, what he did with Dan Steele and Batman v Superman, I, just, I don't like what he did with it, and some people do, but I, just, I don't like what he did with it. I don't think he has the slightest clue uh, how to make a proper Superman story. Like, wow, Henry Cavill is a very good actor, but he doesn't really show that, because he doesn't direct him properly in the Superman films, and just... It's sad, really, it really is, and I, I didn't love his animated owl movie, either, and just, yeah... I know fanboys, some fanboys like him. I, I don't personally care for him. Coming number seven is Michael Bay. <laughs> okay. Everyone's like, why isn't he number one? Because he's not the most overrated. Because there are a lot of people who fucking hate Michael Bay. There's actually a oh, shit ton of people who hate Michael Bay. The reason I put him at overrated is because there are, he has a fan base. What proves that is his movies make money. They make a lot of money, like billions. His Transformers movies were a huge hit. People genuinely love Michael Bay. Some people have just, just 
it's just straight guilty pleasure for Michael Bay. I enjoy one movie of his, The Rock, and that's just a goofy, silly movie. The rest of his films suck. I don't know. I don't know why people even like him. Even people like that Pain and Game movie. I thought that was a stupid movie. And just like I, I didn't know where to put him on this list because I know he's a very hated guy, but I also know he's a very loved guy. So he's more like divisive than anything. But I think he's still overrated because he shouldn't be making movies. <laughs> Coming to number six is M Night Shyamalan. I remember years ago I did a worst list. And I had M. Night Shyamalan as one of the worst directors. I regret putting him on that list because it's not fair, even though he made my least favorite film of all time, The Last Airbender. It's hard to get over that because what he did with that movie was just such an atrocity. Like, it's hard to forgive someone for doing that and just just blatantly just ruining a great franchise. Well, he didn't really ruin it. You can't ruin it, but just completely missing the mark of what that show was. Not just the characters, but just the whole spirit and tone of it. She's like, I don't know. Um, when he made Split, I thought, like, okay, maybe Shyamalan is back. Everyone was saying Shyamalan is, black, is back. Everyone was saying Shyamalan was back, and he's back to making great films. And then he made this year's Glass and just proved that he is not back at all. <laughs> I, I, I know so many people have this huge love for Shyamalan. Like, Chris Stuckman's one of them. He thinks he's amazing and stuff. Uh, I don't get it. I, I, I like Unbreakable. I like The Sixth Sense, and I like Split, but that's really all he's got. I think Signs is overrated. I think The Happening is a piece of crap. I think Lady in the Water is a piece of crap. I think The Village isn't very good. The Last Airbender is an abomination. Just like, I don't think he's that great of a filmmaker. Some people really love him. And even when Signs came out, they called him the next Spielberg. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Coming to number five is Terrence Malick. Terrence Malick, again, has a very particular uh, style. He's not about cohesive storytelling. He tells story through visuals and stuff. Uh, it's all through, like, symbolism and everything. And I have no problem making movies like that. Just, they're hard to get into. I like Badlands. I like The Thin Red Line. There was elements of The Tree of Life that I really enjoyed. But, like, he's got a lot of those, like, weird films. Night of Cups to The Wonder... He's got other films, too, just I, I, I can't get into them. And just like, oh, like, come on, give me something different. I feel like he... I feel like when he did Badlands and the Red Line, he actually showed he was a truly talented filmmaker. But then, after all the Tree of Life, I feel like he's just now a one-trick pony and then just makes every movie just like the Tree of Life. And no one wants that. And now he's become a, an incredibly overrated filmmaker. Coming to number four is Roland Emmerich. I don't know why we all like this guy. I can't stand Roland Emmerich. Uh... Again, his movies make money. I know some of his movies have tanked, but some people really enjoy it. I have, like, the soft spot for Roland Emmerich. I think he is an awful filmmaker. I I don't mind The Patriot with Mel Gibson. It's a very historically inaccurate movie, but I still enjoy it. It's a fun little film, but Stargate was garbage. Um, White House Down, all his stupid disaster movies like 2012, The Day After Tomorrow... All that crap is just ridiculous. Independence Day is overrated. I know a lot of people love Independence Day. The sequel is even worse. It is, I don't know. I know he's like this sort of guilty pleasure fun filmmaker, but I, just, I don't have fun anytime I watch his movies. Coming number three is Todd Phillips. Todd Phillips is super overrated. Uh, yeah, I like Old School. I think that's a pretty funny movie. Other than that, I don't really like his movies. I know he did the Hangover trilogy. I can't stand that trilogy. I know it's a very loved trilogy, mostly the first one. I think the first one is even super overrated. I don't really like those Hangover movies, and I know that's what like made Tom Phillips like who he is and stuff. And he did like Due Date, which is a stupid ripoff of planes, trains, and automobiles, and just like. I don't know, I can't get into Todd Phillips' films. Uh, I know he's doing the new uh, Joker movie, which I'm pretty curious about, but. As of now, I just, I'm not impressed by him. <laughs> Coming to number two is Lars von Trier. Lars von Trier, wow, I can't stand this guy. Uh, whew, um, I always thought like Lars von Trier was trying so hard to be a lot like Dario Argento. But Dario Argento has this particular style to him, and he creates enough substance and a, enough intellectual uh, dialogue to make it more interesting, his films are more interesting. And he also still doesn't... He doesn't try to be gratuitous just for the fact of being gratuitous, like Lars von Trier does. Like, movies like 
I don't know what Lars von Trier is thinking half the time. Like, I couldn't stand the Nymphomaniac movies or Antichrist or shit like that. I'm like, what the hell is this crap? I didn't mind um, Melkoni. I think that was a pretty cool movie. I feel like he had a balance. I feel like now nah, that he was actually trying to be a lot like uh, Terrence Malick meets uh, Dario Argento. But when he goes to his, like, fucking torture fetish, I just... He's no better than Saw directors. Like, I just, I don't understand why he's so brilliant to some people. Uh, I think he's just kind of meh. And my number one most overrated uh, movie director is probably the one that's going to give me the most hate because he's already given me hate already on this channel. That's Yorgos Lothamos. Yorgos Lothamos, I know people love this guy. They think he's so brilliant. They think he's one of the great modern filmmakers of our time. I don't agree. I think Denis Villeneuve. I think Denis Villeneuve is one of the great up and upcoming filmmakers. I think he's so good. Yorgos Lothamos. He's made three movies. Two sucked, and one was just pretty decent. I hated The Lobster. It kind of rips off the same story of a Simpsons episode. And the whole joke of the movie is that everyone gives bland performances. That's the running joke. And it's not very funny. And I don't think the script was worth uh, original screenplay nomination. Not in the slightest bit. I thought Killing of the Sacred Deer was a more messed up movie and a more creepy movie with dark comedy and this like really weird, bizarre thriller. And I just didn't think it worked either. I don't think the performances worked. I don't think the structure worked. I just, I'm like, what is with this guy? Like, I don't know why people love this guy. And then I saw The Favorite. It was definitely an, an improvement over the other two. I really liked the three performances of um, Olivia Coleman, Emma Stone, and Rachel Wise, I thought all of them were really great, and the production and the cinematography were really good. I feel like there was some tediousness of the film, and even the way he does some of the angles is kind of repetitive. And I feel like he borrows a lot of tropes from Wes Anderson and Stanley Kubrick. Instead of mimicking, uh, instead of creating his own style, I feel like he mimics other like art house directors. Especially someone who's quirky as Wes Anderson. And just, I don't know. I don't see the brilliantness of Yorgos Lothamos. I know a lot of people love him, but I find him overrated. So that's my top 10 most overrated movie directors. Don't worry, I'll be getting to the underrated. Yeah, they're the underdogs. I know that's the one you're all looking forward to the most. I'll stop shitting on people now. Anyways, in the comment section below, please tell me, did you agree with this top 10 list? If not, give you guys top 10 most overrated film directors in your guys' opinion. Comment, comment below, let me know, and as always, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.